Today on The Daily Deposit, Bud Light's marketing backlash, a transgender influencer, boycotts, and woke beer woes. If you like this video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and let us know your thoughts in the comments. Once upon a time in the land of social media, Bud Light and Budweiser found themselves in hot water after partnering with a transgender influencer named Dylan Mulvaney. The trouble started when Bud Light tweeted a picture of a can on April 14, with the caption, TGIF? Little did they know, it would ignite a firestorm of criticism. Overwhelmed by the backlash, Bud Light and Budweiser went radio silent on Twitter for over a month. Their previous tweets were bombarded with thousands of comments, berating the brands for their decision to work with Mulvaney. One unhappy Twitter user even proclaimed, no more at Budweiser hashtag get woke go broke, while pledging allegiance to Coors Banquet. But the trouble didn't end there. Budweiser's main account and Budweiser USA's account also joined the silence. Unable to escape the wave of criticism, even an ad featuring their beloved Clydesdale horses couldn't escape the ire of over 25,000 critical replies. As the dust settled, it became clear that Bud Light sales were taking a nosedive. Week after week, their numbers dropped, with a staggering 28.4% decrease from the previous year reported for the week ending May 13. Other Anheuser-Busch products like Michelob Ultra also suffered, with a 6.8% decline while Coors Light and Miller Light experienced sales growth of 16.9% and 15.1%, respectively. Desperate to turn the tide, Bud Light hatched a plan just before Memorial Day weekend. They introduced a promotional rebate, offering a refund equivalent to the purchase price of one 15-pack or larger, up to $15. In some cases, this meant customers could get their hands on free beer. But the damage was done and even such a generous offer struggled to win back the favor of the boycotting masses. The boycott also took its toll on beer distributors associated with Anheuser-Busch. In a move to support struggling wholesalers, the company promised to repurchase expired Bud Light inventory. The consequences of the backlash were hitting hard, leaving many wondering how Bud Light would recover. Amidst the chaos, Brendan Whitworth, CEO of Anheuser-Busch, issued a statement expressing regret over the divisive situation. He emphasized that their true purpose was to bring people together over a beer, not drive them apart. The fallout didn't spare the individuals responsible for the ill-fated partnership. Alyssa Heinerscheid, Bud Light's Vice President of Marketing, and Daniel Blake, Budweiser's Group Vice President for Marketing, were both placed on leave. Their decisions to work with Mulvaney had consequences they couldn't evade. In the end, the story serves as a cautionary tale for brands seeking to navigate the treacherous waters of public opinion. The Bud Light and Budweiser saga reminded us all that even a seemingly innocent marketing choice can create a whirlwind of controversy. So, let it be a lesson to marketers everywhere tread carefully. For the online world can be a fickle beast indeed.